Hi, my name is Josh Evilsizer. Today we're going over AI chatbot prompting fundamentals. Are you watching the right video? Well, if your AI chatbot results aren't what you like them to be, or you're just starting out with AI, and you want to know the basics of an effective prompt, then yes. Questions answered in this video. When and how to provide examples for prompting AI models. When should you provide examples. Rules of thumb for when to provide examples. When shouldn't you provide an example. And I'll go over three of the most common scenarios and provide a demo for each. Finally, we'll end with the most important question, why should you care? Let's jump right in. So when should you provide examples? Number one, you're dealing with highly specific tasks that require a particular format or style. Two, if you've got unfamiliar concepts or requests, or this task involves a new idea or a combination of skills the model hasn't used together before, or anytime you're asking the model for something it hasn't been trained on. Finally, number three, ambiguity. If your instructions could be interpreted multiple ways, or if there's indirect language, or it's a nuanced request. These are times that you should provide examples. Some quick rules of thumb. So ultimately, when you should provide example, <clears throat> the more unique or unusual the request, the more examples are likely to help. About examples, quality over quantity. A few high quality examples are better than many mediocre examples all day long. And your examples should showcase exactly the kind of output that you're looking for, not kind of the output. Finally, we're dealing with AI chatbots, so you're gonna have to iterate. If you're not getting the results you're looking for, try improving the prompt or improving the quality and or the quantity of the examples you're providing. Finally, when shouldn't you provide an example or when are examples less effective? Reasoning tasks. Their open-ended nature makes it difficult to provide representative examples that cover every possible nuance and variation. But enough of me talking and waving my hands, let's jump into some examples. So the first example is going to be for a highly specific task or unfamiliar concepts or requests provided to the model. Here we have a brand new poem structure. We have some rules for this poem structure. Rule number one. Six lines total, three sentences, three single words. Lines one and two rhyme. The third sentence rhymes with the third single word. So we wanna create a new poem using this structure and these rules. Let's go ahead and jump right in. So if you've seen any of my previous videos on prompting, links in the <laughs> description below, uh, you gotta provide context, and that is persona, audience, and output. So in this case, our persona is that of a poet skilled at writing poems that adhere to a very specific literary structure. All right, references. So we're moving into references and here in Claude, um, I say Claude overtly because XML tags are something that Claude likes. So we're gonna introduce our example with the XML tag example and then we'll end it with the closeout XML tag of example. And of course, here is the poem that we want, the structure that we want Claude to emulate. So we're providing the example. And lastly, it's important that we ask lastly, I'm sorry, not yet lastly, we're doing the rules next. Then we'll do instructions. So here we go, here's the rules. Six lines total, three sentences, three single words, only sentences one and two rhyme, and the third sentence rhymes with the third single word. So there's our rules. Now the instructions. And what I was trying to say is you always want to provide your instructions last. As uh, new results have recently determined, or studies in any event, when you ask or provide the prompt last, as in here's your role or here's what I need you to do, providing this last provides the best results. Kind of like a human, right? You want to give them all the background information first, then ask them the question, versus asking the question, then giving a bunch of background information and they've forgotten the question. Uh, same with the model. So treat a model like a human because a lot of times they act like one. In any event, here are the instructions. Write a poem about dinosaurs. Mimic the example format and follow the rhyming rules. Let's see if it works. It's like a roll of the dice with uh, these things. You never know. Didn't work. <laughs> Nine times out of ten it works. Doesn't always work in the video. So just like I said, you're going to have to, I'm going to have to iterate. What do I need to do? I'm gonna change the way the prompt is written 
and or I'm going to provide a few more examples. I've only provided one here, so perhaps that's why. Didn't follow my own rules, or I'll provide a better example. Now, I don't know how I would do that, uh, but ultimately, as you can see, one example wasn't enough, and the rules that I provided weren't clear enough. So fix the prompt, provide a better example. All right, so that's our first example. The next one, we're going to show you how to use, um, use the model and examples for text transformation plus style and tone adaptation or adoption, depending on how you look at it. So here, what I have for you is an example of an employee evaluation report. It's actually an officer evaluation report, uh, things we use in the Army. Uh, but what I'm going to share with you here is the beginning. So the employee meets with the employer and lists out their objectives for the year. And then at the very end of the year, where they list their accomplishments. And it looks like this. So here's my objectives. Here's what I completed. So we have kind of what I wanted to do and what I did. And what we want to do is we want to write a narrative that combines these, explaining what they wanted to do and what they did, and a narrative that kind of puts it all together in a very specific style, format, and tone. Because uh, again, this is an officer evaluation report and it's got a very m military tone, style. In any event, uh, this is these are the bullets for the parts of an officer evaluation report that is titled character. And there are six other components or six total. Presence, intellect, leading or leadership, how you develop, and do you get stuff done, achieves. And what these look like... <clears throat> Are right here if put into a single word document usually they're in an army format i didn't want to show that to you here so this is what it looks like when you're all done not an insignificant amount of writing so if you could take all of those before and afters by six multiply by six have an ai chatbot kind of give you a draft result wouldn't that make your life a little bit easier and that's what we're going to do here so the goal is to turn these bullets into a narrative like this so examples we're going to give to the model are right here. So I have three previously written reports, or at least the substantive bullets pulled from those reports and put into Word docs, so they're very clean. Um, and as you can see here for Captain Kirk, for Lieutenant Spears, and Captain Hook, I have just some of the best examples of these reports that I've written before, and they're in a Word document, and we'll show you how we upload those in a second. Uh, but finally, we're also going to provide the model completed bullets, so the before and after bullets. So we're going to give the model examples of what right looks like, and then we're going to give the, the model the before and after bullets, and we want the model to give us that narrative. So let's jump into how we do that. All right, so first we want to upload our references, so I'm going to do that now. Here we are, we have the before and after, and then we have the example verbiage, one, two, and three. So I'm gonna go ahead and upload those. You'll see, or you may not be able to see, but the name of the file exactly matches the way I refer to it every time. Trying to remove all chances of confusing the model, so just being very specific and detail-oriented when we write these prompts can be helpful. Context. So as I explained before, you always want to provide context, persona, audience, output. So here we're going to assume the persona of, Ohio, of an Ohio Army National Guard Lieutenant Colonel named Josh Evelsizer, whose job is to complete a company-grade officer evaluation report. And then I put in parentheses OER, and then from here on out, I refer to it as OER because I've told the model what it is. Uh, for Captain America, in accordance with Army regulation, blah, 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 blah. All right. That's the first part of the context. You will use the character objectives and accomplishments, and I write them in all caps because I've included them in all caps in the example. So I'm trying to just make everything match. You gotta dummy proof this for the model, right? You don't have to, but treat it like a human because it acts like a human. Uh, so we use the character objectives and accomplishment bullets provided to you to complete the character narrative of the OER. What is last on this? You will also refer to previous examples of completed OERs written by Lieutenant Colonel Josh Evelsizer so that you can replicate the same writing style and tone used in the example OERs. What we're doing here, style and tone, very similar to how some 
organizations may try to take branding examples and create new narratives or stories or copy using those previous examples. So this is a this is a, a great example of how you could also mimic your own company's brand or voice. Applicable in other areas. All right. So we've got the context done. What's next? References. As I mentioned, so I could put I could have put example OER's verbiage 1-3 and just let the model kind of figure out there's there's three things it should reference. But instead of doing that, I listed them all out individually, just trying to make it completely dummy proof and again treating the model like it's a human. Uh, fourth one here, character objectives and achievements, and that's the last attachment. So we've got all the attachments and we or reference references. What is next? Instructions. So this is the last part. Your role is to follow and complete the steps as listed below. And as we've learned in previous videos, you want to bulletize steps so the mo it's easier for the model to follow. You chunk those more complex, long list of tasks that could be in a paragraph. We don't want to put it in a paragraph. We want to chunk it into one, two, three tasks. And here we go. Review each of the example OERs, example OERs one through three, just reminding it what I'm talking about, to understand writing style and tone only, being careful not to extract any specific details from these example OERs as they are only an example. And that that caveat's there for a reason. Uh, previous runs on this were interesting. All right, number two, using the objectives and accomplishments bullets provided to you, create a one paragraph narrative, and that's one paragraph is specific for a reason as well, that can be used to complete the character section of the evaluation. Finally, Think step-by-step step to execute this assignment and ask any questions you have before getting started. That you have before getting started. Step-by-step step tells the model to think through this logically, step-by-step, step, and ask questions before you get started. Often, it's just the best thing to do to start with these two caveats at the very end. All right, and we'll go ahead and hit the send button and see what we get. We should end up with a single one paragraph narrative that combines the before and after bullets for us. There we go. Beautiful. A little long, I could ask it to condense or I could just take this giant paragraph and condense it on my own and make it a little bit more my own style in case it's not. But it used three of my examples, so I'm sure it is. All right, so <clears throat> why all this? Why should you care? Great question. Why should you improve your prompting skills? AI is the future, the future is now. And no, AI will not replace humans, but humans that use AI will replace those that don't. And the only way to get good at using AI is by using AI. Thank you for watching. If this video has been helpful or has inspired you to try and merge styles or do anything that I showed you in this video, please let me know. Love to see that stuff, really appreciate it. Don't forget, linked goodness in the description below all the precursor videos that came before this one make sure you check those out please like subscribe share this with somebody else that might like it and as always if you leave questions i will leave answers now go and be productive